Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast with Michelle Chalfont, a place to delve into who we are, how we got that way, and explore what it takes to be a healthy grown up. With an extensive toolbox and guests with varied expertise, Michelle will lead us on a journey to learn what it's like to live authentically and to love ourselves just the way we are. And now, here's Michelle. Hello, everybody. We are in May. I am shocked about that one. May 2019. Wow. It has been a very exciting week for me, I have to share, because my son came home from Barcelona. If those of you that saw me on social media, and I think it, I talked about it here too, we dropped him off over Christmas and he came home last Thursday. So I am so happy to have my little my little 21-year-old home. <laughs> I missed him so much and he's home and it's wonderful to have him. What else do I want to share with you? Oh, I did something really fun. It was overwhelming, but it was really fun. And the other big thing that has been in Nashville, or that was just in Nashville, actually there were two things. It was a double whammy of a long weekend. The rock and roll marathon was here as it is every year, but also that NFL draft, which everybody was talking about it. And normally I avoid downtown, but because so many people were talking about this gigantic, impressive stage that was built, I had to go down and see it. And so a group of us went down there and I have to say, it was very impressive. It was quite the scene downtown Nashville last weekend. And I was there. I had to, of course, come home and detox because all the people and all that energy, it overwhelms me being the empath. So I had to come home and not detox from drinking or anything like that. It was just when I get around that many people, I had to come home and just sit outside for a bit and just uh, let, let my energy purge everyone else's energy because I tend to just you know, merge with everyone else. So a hundred thousand people were down there and I was right in the middle of it all. And it was really fun. My inner child had a lot of fun, I have to say. Anyway, this week, today, I'll be chatting with you about what do we work on next? Like, what do we heal next? I hear that question all the time. Like, okay, you know, I've learned the adult chair. I love the adult chair. Where do I go next? What do I do next? I don't know what to do. Can you help point me in the right direction? And people are overwhelmed with all the different things that they can do. So I'm going to be chatting with you about that today. I'm going to break it down for you and tell you exactly how we do this process of transformation and healing of the self. But first I have to share with you again, I think you all know this, but we have the adult chair weekend intensive. It is in two days. I am thrilled to be there and having it in Nashville again. But of course, I know it's not the best weekend for everybody. It is graduation weekend. It's We've got weddings. And I know so many of you had said they're so sad that they cannot come. So we will do another adult chair weekend intensive, probably in the fall or the winter. But we do have still, I think like a couple spots for this weekend. So if you want to come, you can come join us. Check it out at theadultchair.com forward slash workshop. And what else do I want to share with you? I guess that's it. I'm going to jump right into our big thank you for today's sponsor. And this is a new company, which I love. They are Myro, M-Y-R-O. I think most of you probably know that I do prefer more natural products. And I have found a great one that I am thrilled to share with you guys. Myro is making deodorant better. They deliver obsession-worthy, naturally effective deodorant that looks as good as it smells. They make their natural deodorant with a custom blend of essential oils that release over time to keep you fresh and barley powder to keep you dry. Their formula is hardworking, long-lasting with no toxic anything, which I love. 0% aluminum, 0% parabens. Their ingredients are clinically tested for safety and efficacy. So here's how it works. First, you go online, you're going to choose your scent and the color of your case. And let me just tell you, it's overwhelming because they have so many cute cases to choose from and the colors and the scents. It's like adorable. 
And then what happens is you get a refresh after you pick everything and you order, you get a refresh every three months delivered straight to your door, conveniently timed for when most people run out. You can switch scents at any time. You can pause it at any time. You can stop it at any time. But I'm telling you, when you get this thing in the mail, you're not going to want to. I got the cutest package. I felt like it was my birthday. It reminded me of a gift that I would get for on my birthday. It's adorable. I got Chill Wave and it had cucumber, jasmine, and spearmint. And next month, I think I'm going to go for the orange. I mean, let me just tell you, it smells so good with the essential oils and it works well. So many of the deodorants that I've tried that are all natural do not work well. This one works really well and smells amazing. So Myro's offering us 50% off your first order, which means you can get started today for just five bucks. So visit mymyro, that's M-Y-M-Y-R-O.com forward slash adult and you can get 50% off your first order. Again, that's my myro, M-Y-M-Y-R-O.com forward slash adult. All right, getting right into this now. Moving to what do we heal next? What do we work on next? Again, I get this question quite a bit. I see it on social media quite a bit where people are saying, okay, I'm very excited. I love the adult chair, but what do I do? Do I work on this? Do I work on that? Which podcast do I listen to? I get that question all the time. And I always say to people, listen to the first four and then you can jump around. But I know many of you, because you share with me that you've listened from number one all the way through until today, which is fabulous. And so many of you say it's like free counseling, which I love hearing because that's one of the reasons. I mean, I originally created this just for like a resource for some of my clients and it turned into something much bigger than I ever dreamed. So I love it. Share it with whomever. I'm glad that you think it's like free counseling, that you're getting so much out of it. I'm thrilled to be offering this to all of you. But what do you work on next? What, if you feel overwhelmed, where do you direct your attention? So here's what I share with everybody. Again, I say, on the, as far as the podcast goes, listen to the first four so you get a foundation and then jump around. If you go to my website, just go to theadultchair.com, there's a search bar and you can actually put in the search bar any topic that you want. So you can put in narcissism, you can put in codependency and all the podcasts around that topic will pop up for you. Or you can just scroll through. All the titles are right there. You can scroll through all of them. You can do the same thing on iTunes or wherever that that you listen to these shows. In my opinion, as far as what we work on next, well, you've probably heard me say this many times if you listen to this show. I really believe everything happens in divine time, meaning everything lines up and presents itself to us in the perfect time, on time. You are right on time on your life path. I think I just said that last week when I talked about being. It's like, just keep showing up for life and it will present to you what you work on next. You, you know, we can do this process of what we work on from the adult chair or from the adolescent chair. So the adolescent chair, I've had clients, I've had clients that have come in and I remember actually, it was many, many years ago. I think it was actually in a different state when I was in North Carolina and someone had come in and said, okay, so I'm going to do meditation, you know, an hour a day and I'm going to journal for an hour a day. You know, it was like all of this stuff that she was doing. And I said, she goes, what do you think of all that? And I said, well, I'm overwhelmed listening to what you're going to do in one day. I said, slow down. What's the rush? What's the rush? So there's a beautiful flow. And I did a whole podcast on living in the flow. And you've probably heard me reference this too. When you're going down that beautiful life path of yours, that beautiful, think about yourself in a river in a beautiful little boat or a canoe, drop the paddles. You don't have to steer your life. Wait until whatever you need to work on presents itself to you. What feels right? What are you drawn to? Where do you feel led? It's like, just because you know something happened in your past or something's going on in your life even right now, does it mean you have to work on it right now? Only if it's up for you. I remember where I was standing. I remember opening up my my refrigerator probably about 10 years ago. 
who knows why it dropped in at that point in time when I was opening up my fridge, who cares, but I was opening it up and I had the thought, oh my God, I have PTSD from my childhood. I honestly didn't know with all the stuff I've learned and education and training and therapy and all this, it had dawned on me 10 years ago that I had some PTSD. Now I didn't drop what I was doing and go run out and work on my PTSD. I just had the awareness of it. So when we do it from our adult chair, we're noticing, wow, like I did like, wow, there's something there. Huh. Okay. And then I reached in the fridge, grabbed what I wanted to get and continued on with my day. I don't drop everything. I don't suddenly focus on it only if it presents itself. So in that moment, for whatever reason, everything aligned and I was very aware of it and it all dropped in. I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much more sense. You know, think about life as a puzzle that that you're building. And it was another piece of the puzzle that kind of clicked in. I thought, oh, that's something I'm going to have to look at, you know, when it's time. We're doing it from our adolescent chair would be like that other person I was telling you about. (laughs) It was like, I'm going to work on this and this and this, and it's overwhelming. And I'm, I don't know, you know, and we're losing ourselves in the process. Working on our stuff from the adult chair is when everything is right on time and it feels right and it's lining up. and, And so for me, with my PTSD, let's just use that for, I'll just use that for an example. It's like, oh yeah, okay. And then it didn't mean that when I went into therapy the next week, I was like, I need to work on this right now because it wasn't presenting itself. It was a really beautiful awareness and I didn't go in that next week. And I don't think I went in until it started really surfacing for me. Think about like a volcano and it doesn't, not not to be scary, like a giant volcano that is erupting, but like a little baby, a little baby one with a little bit of lava that sort of comes up. And sometimes it's a giant one, but what I do is I wait for like that bubbling up to happen. I wait for the stirring inside of myself, like, oh, there's something there, something juicy. I want to go get it. I want to look at that now. That's living from the adult chair and working on our stuff from that perspective. I just took a very pretty intense trauma training a couple of weeks ago and I was going through it and I really, I didn't feel much of anything because I'm like, I've worked on that, worked on that. And there's like one little tiny piece of something. I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to look at that. I'm really excited. I do want to look at that little piece. And again, I didn't think, well, I better work on it immediately. I was like, yeah, that's something I really do want to take a look at. And I did and I worked on it and life went on. But it's not like I, you have to tackle it in this very second. So I just had this question recently I think it was on Instagram and someone had said, there was some quote that that was posted, that I posted and I don't remember the quote. It was something about to heal your codependency, you've got to be willing to sit in your pain or something like that. And someone had said, you know, how do I do that? How do I sit in my pain? Well, again, it's about waiting for it to come up. Like I know that I have probably some pain within me, but it's not up for me right now. So I don't even have to, I don't go looking for it unless it's up for me. And this is what I had mentioned to this person. I said, just wait and it will present itself. So it's about going through life and noticing maybe when you're triggered, like, wow, that really triggered me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and point my attention toward that trigger. Because as we know, triggers, if we're triggered, as you know, it's our stuff. So we want to go inside and say, you know what? What is it about what just happened with that person that's bringing something up for me? Huh, let me take a look at that. That's when I look at something. Or if I'm really upset about something or I'm suddenly angered or you know, any sort of anything that's pulling me out of emotional balance and peace is that's when I want to at least write it down. I might not even be able to work on it in that moment, but I'm going to write it down and go, ooh, there's another juicy one. Again, notice my words because I get excited to work on things because remember, it's just our life path and it's a discovering more. I get excited because we're discovering more of who we are. This whole adult chair model is about self-realization. So we get these parts revealed to us when we are triggered or when we have an uncomfortable emotion. That's when we get to go in and explore and journey. You know, we go in and explore and we get curious about, ooh, why am I out of balance? 
So I don't get upset. The old me would have said, oh my God, what's wrong with me? I have another emotional wound coming up. I'm so dysfunctional. I don't even do that anymore. And I would invite you guys to join me in this new way of thinking. It's like, cool. I get to learn a little bit more about Michelle. You know, I want to learn more about myself and me being out of balance a little bit or or being upset or being sad or being anxious or being whatever I am. I have that in that in those moments I have the opportun- opportunity to turn toward myself and step more into myself and get to know more of me. And when we look deeper into whatever that is in that moment is how we discover more of ourselves and self-realize and find greater peace. So so what do we do in order to to heal and transform? Journal. Again, if if we want to bring, you know, and I said this to this person, I said, if you really do want to bring something up and something sort of festering inside, I recommend journaling. Journaling is a great one because you're, it's sort of like you're, you're tapping into that. You're dropping more into that subconscious mind when you're journaling. If you let that pen just write, don't have an idea about what to write. So if you do realize like, you know, something's going on in my marriage or in my relationship or with my work or with my childhood, whatever it might be, sit down with a pen and paper and make it like a really, a really quiet space and start writing. And just see what comes. Let your hand go. Don't have an idea about what you're writing. Just let your hand write. You'll be very surprised at what comes out when we do that. We sort of enter into that other state of mind. And that's when we're tapping into maybe the unconscious mind. And it just starts pulling up through our pen. Another thing we can do is sometimes I'll feel something bubbling up like a little bit inside of me. And I'm not sure what it is. That's when we need someone to mirror us. And we want to feel seen and heard. So I'll call one of my people and I'll say, listen, I remember when we talked about, or I've talked about this in the past, about setting it up. So when I feel like I really am I'm onto something, it's like I can feel it stirring and festering inside of me just a little bit. And I really want to pull that up through me. I'll call someone and say, and here's the setup. I'll say, hey, do you have a few minutes to just listen to me? Because I need to share this with someone and I need you to just listen just for a few minutes, probably, you know, let them know, like probably no more than 15 minutes or so, maybe 10. But here's the thing, I need you not to interrupt me because I can feel something wanting to come out and come up and reveal itself. So what I need more than anything from you is just to listen. So I want to let you know ahead of time, I might cry, I might be upset, I might be angry. Please don't talk me down off of that. I need that to come out and through me so I can see and feel and know what this is deep inside of me. So all that I need you to do is just witness me. And I'd be so grateful if you could do that for me. Is that something that you can do for me? So that's the set up. We want to set it up with another person because of course, oftentimes when we're crying or we're angry, you know, that other person will say, well, hold on a second. You don't have to be that angry. Why are you getting so angry? No, 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 no. We don't want that. So we want to explain to them ahead of time, please just witness, just listen. I just need someone to mirror me. That will help me so much get to get to the root of what is going on. So that's really beneficial just to be mirrored. Another thing we can do, and I want you to, again, remember, this is a personal journey. So what's working for your best friend may not be working for you or may not work for you. It might, but it might not. So, you know, I've had people come to me and say, oh my gosh, I've read the best book. It totally has changed my life. You have to listen to this book and blah, 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 you know, and they give me the book and I'm like, oh, it's okay. But that's perfect. You know, our souls, we're all different and we all have different divine times. You know, my timing for things is not the same as yours. So if your friend is having their mind blown with, let's say, journaling or a certain book they're reading or doing parts work or whatever it is, and they say, you must do this. It will change your life. I swear to God, you got to listen. You got to do this. Da, 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 da. I always ask people this question, you know, do you feel drawn to that? Do you feel pulled to do that? If you don't, then don't do it. (laughs) It's not time for you. It's not to say that maybe in a day or a week or a year, you might be drawn to the same exact thing, but go ahead and try it out. If you feel, if they're having their mind blown by journaling, then do some journaling. If you hate every minute of it, then it's not for you. And it doesn't mean that it's bad or it's wrong or something wrong with you. No, 
it means your soul is like, I don't want you to journal. I just wanted you to go do yoga (laughs) or I wanted you to go take that painting class. So honor yourself, go within and honor you because only you know what's best for you. This is why I've said so many times on this podcast and to my clients, and if you know me at all, I say this all the time. It's all about me. And that I do not mean that to be a selfish statement. It means I need to stay connected to myself so I know what I need. I know when I need to set a boundary. I know if I need to journal or do inner inner child work or go to yoga or go for a walk. Only I know that. That's why I say it's all about me. That's not an act of selfishness. That's an act of self-awareness. Please direct your attention back toward you. And if someone offers you a great idea, take it into and under consideration and then say, let me try that on. If it doesn't resonate, there's nothing wrong with you. It just means it's not time for you to do that. Your soul, again, might want you to do something completely different than what your friend is doing. Now, some people have said to me, well, I don't feel like doing anything. I'm really scared. Am I blocking? I think I'm blocking. What do you think, Michelle? Do you think I'm blocking? Because I think I should be drawn to something. Da, 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 da. So if that's true, because perhaps our sweet little adolescent, perhaps we're being blocked because the ego is scared to go within and work on something. Perhaps that's what's going on. So if you feel like that could be you, then go ahead and do a little journaling. Try it out, but make it special. Like, don't go into it like, okay, I freaking hate journaling. Let me just sit down here at the dining room table and journal. Like, let's get the inner child really happy. Like, make it really fun and special. Like, light a few candles or incense or go sit outside in a field or do something special and relax. Take a deep breath get in the moment and then journal and see how it goes. If you're pushing yourself to do something you don't want to do, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. I guarantee it. Or if you want to go do some inner child work, go right ahead, but make it fun. Like, okay, I'm going to sit. No one's home right now. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to see if I can imagine my inner child, or I'm going to get a doll and I'm going to work with that little part of me, whatever it is, but make it kind of fun for yourself listen to a guided meditation. Like there's so many things that you can try and do it for a few days and see if there's a block there. Notice you might feel blocked. You might push through that block and then you might realize, oh yeah, it's not journaling I want to do. Again, I kind of feel like doing yoga because so if you go toward one thing, it might lead you into another direction or I feel like doing pottery or I feel like going to the gym, whatever it is, honor that and move forward with whatever that desire is within you. And I want to say this again, wherever you are in life and whatever you're doing, you are right on time. Do not rush your life. The issues that you, that your soul wants you to work on will be revealed when it's time to work on them. (laughs) And if you ignore or miss the opportunity or shove it down, it's okay. Please be easy on yourself. I'm not saying to avoid your whole entire life. That's not what I'm saying, but just be easy on yourself. Trust me, please. It will be revealed again. Your soul wants you to work through this. Your soul, the soul wants us to live and have many, many experiences, but it's all about the self-realization so we can live with greater peace. So Trust me, this issue that you might've missed or you didn't want to work on in that moment, it'll be back, I promise. And it's layered, even though you think you worked on your shame once and it was a whopper, trust me, we have layers like an onion. It'll come back in a different form, but maybe a little bit less. So again, if you feel caught up with five things all at once, like maybe you're married to someone that drinks too much and your mother was a narcissist and you're realizing you you feel like you're a bad parent and you got all this stuff just thrown in your face right now and you're totally overwhelmed and anxious. Same thing. I would say the same thing if this is you. It's okay. Let's bring the emotions down so we can find one thing to work on. Perhaps you start journaling. Maybe you're drawn to a meeting. 
call a friend, meditate. What we want to do is get ourselves a little bit more in balance so then we can find our truth with what we want to work on next. Maybe do some EFT, some tapping to bring your emotional state down. Do some deep breathing. Maybe you just go for a walk. You cannot get your life path wrong. I just want to say that. You can't get it wrong. So stop thinking you've gotten your whole life wrong. It's not wrong. You're right on time, I promise you. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Just go with what feels right for you in the moment. Do one thing at a time. That's living from the adult. That's living in the flow state. That's not charging toward everything, you know, a million miles an hour from the adolescent chair trying to knock everything out like a -a (laughs) whack-a-mole. Like, let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that issue. Remember that game when the little mole comes up and you whack it with a hammer? That's not your life path, people. It's about a series of experiences as we go down this life path. And even if you're married to a narcissist, it doesn't mean you've got to hurry up and work on your stuff and get out the door tomorrow. It's like, okay, you had a discovery about yourself. Now what's the next step? What's the one next thing for you to do? Doesn't mean you have to leave. And we the ego wants to want you to rush it and fix it immediately. There's no fix. It's just an experience, and you will get through it with a greater power, learning how to set boundaries with your voice if you do it in the way that you're not again doing it like a -a whack-a-mole, but you're doing it with what feels right in this moment. I feel like I want to journal, then journal. This is why I created that membership site. We work on one thing a month and we go into it. And that helps people like really get into the heart of whatever that topic is. So that would be another option for you guys. Come join us there because then you're working on one thing a month. So this month of May, we're working on self-love. I get in there. It will help you guys There's a monthly live q and I answer all your questions. I I get in there, I answer. It's a very small community of people. There's a monthly talk. There's a monthly guided meditation. There are four journaling prompts just on that specific topic. There's affirmations. So you pick and choose whatever you want to do. But I would, I even say to those people, go with what feels right. You don't have to do every single thing every single month. And you have access to every month until you're not in this group anymore, which is who knows when that's going to be. So you don't have to rush through anything. You go with what feels right. So anyway, if you want to jump on, join us in the membership site, come join us there at theadultchair.com forward slash membership. And that's about all I have for you guys for today. But just know again, you didn't get anything wrong for sure. You are right on time with your path. I promise you, there's something very beautiful inside of you. Your soul is guiding you every step of the way. Slow down, pay attention, and just make sure you are listening. All right, everybody. I wish you another beautiful, beautiful week in your adult chair. Don't forget to come join us if you have the time this weekend in the adult chair weekend intensive come to theadultchair.com forward slash workshop and I will see you seated firmly right here in the adult chair. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, everybody. Bye.